What would you do if you suddenly found yourself face to face with a kangaroo, one of the most notorious sparring opponents of the animal kingdom? I'll bet your first thought wouldn't be to do this. Yup, that dude really did just punch a kangaroo in the face. I bet that's something you never thought you'd see before. If you want to find out what led to this jaw-dropping showdown, plus a whole host of other weird, wonderful, and downright amazing sights, just stick around for this episode of Things You'll See for the First Time in Your Life. Humans and birds have very little in common. They can fly, we can't. They lay eggs, we have live babies. They have feathers, we have body hair. The list goes on. And here's one more thing to add to it. Notice how the bird's head stayed completely still, no matter how much its body moved about? That state-of-the-art stabilization all has to do with vision. You see, animals move a lot, but vision works best when the eye is not moving. The receptors in your eye react to changes slowly enough that the fast motion of the receptors will blur the image, a bit like how panning shots in movies are blurry. It's easier to see motion, like a mouse running along the ground or a predator approaching, if the background is still. So your eyes need to stay still too. Humans manage this by moving their eyes in the opposite direction whenever the head moves, meaning the eyes automatically compensate for your head movement. But birds can't do this because they have larger eyes relative to their body size compared to mammals. To keep the eyes still while the body moves, birds keep the entire head still instead. Birds have a large range of motion thanks to their long dinosaur necks, so it makes sense to use their head to compensate for their bodies moving and to get a stable image of whatever they're looking at. You might even recognize the bizarre phenomenon from an old Mercedes-Benz commercial featuring some uber-focused chickens. I'm not saying it's impossible for humans to move like this, but it'd be pretty hard. It's as automatic for birds as our compensatory eye movements are to us. You can still give it a go, though. Why not focus on those like and subscribe buttons? Oh, and give them a little click while you're at it. As well as that little bell icon to make sure you never miss out on any more amazing content. Here's a question for you. What exactly are you looking at in this video? Unless you're a total science nut, it'll probably take you a few guesses. This is actually a microscopic view of a tardigrade swimming laps around a bubble. If you're thinking, oh, what now? Don't worry. You may not have heard about tardigrades because they're so minuscule, measuring from 0.05 millimeters to 1.2 millimeters long, that they can only be viewed through a scientific microscope. With long, plump bodies, scrunched up heads, eight legs, and four claws on each hand, tardigrades are equal parts terrifying and strangely cute which might have something to do with the fact that they've been nicknamed water bears and moss piglets. If they don't already seem bizarre enough, get this. Tardigrades are basically indestructible. In fact, they're the only creature on Earth that can survive the vacuum of outer space. Although they can live just about anywhere, tardigrades prefer to live in sediment at the bottom of a lake on moist pieces of moss or other wet environments. Scott Chimileski, one of the researchers at the Harvard Microbial Science Initiative who filmed this particular tardigrade, has no idea why it was swimming around a bubble, but thinks it might have been stuck due to surface tension. Or maybe he was just getting his daily exercise in. It sometimes seems like dog lovers have a lot of negative things to say about cats. Usually, they focus on felines being lazy, unbothered evil masterminds. But how can anyone possibly have anything bad to say about this guy? No, you're not seeing things. This cat just has really tiny eyes. His name is Humphrey, aka Stimkey the Cat, and he's a bit of a TikTok celebrity. He and his brother Edgar were both born with a congenital condition called microphthalmia, which causes them to have small, malformed eyes and poor vision. Their loving owner Lola first met them when she was visiting her local shelter back in 2017, but at the time she could only adopt Humphrey. 
The beady-eyed Magi settled in in no time, but Lola still couldn't shake the thought of Edgar from her mind. Then, in 2018, she contacted the adoption center where Edgar was currently living and adopted him too. Edgar's microphthalmia meant that he had to have one of his eyes removed, and both brothers were born without eyelids, which makes seeing clearly a bit of a challenge. But the charismatic pair couldn't be happier to have been reunited. We all know that humans can't survive very long without water, but have you ever stopped to think about how underappreciated the liquid is as one of life's simple pleasures? In fact, water has existed on Earth for 3.8 billion years. It's hard to imagine just how long ago that was, but something as awesome as this really puts things into perspective. In case you were wondering, what you're seeing here is water that has been trapped for millions of years. The outer casing, which looks like some kind of rock or shell, is actually known as an anhydro agate. For those of us that don't speak fluent science, agate is the word used to describe a common rock formation consisting of chalcedony and quartz, which are primarily formed within volcanic and metamorphic rocks. Sometimes, small bubbles of gas or liquid can get trapped within the crystal, which is when they become known as anhydroagates. The formation of anhydros is an ongoing process, with some specimens dating back to the Eocene epoch that lasted from about 56 to 33.9 million years ago. Am I the only one who can't help wondering what it tastes like? Plenty of creatures have mastered the art of camouflage, but you'd be hard-pressed to find a better hide-and-seek opponent than the six-eyed sand spider. I know what you're thinking. Regular spiders hide around my house all the time. But just wait until you see this. In a matter of seconds, this astonishing arachnid vanishes completely into the dirt like some eight-legged Houdini. She might look scary, and that might be a fair judgment. The six-eyed sand spider, which inhabits the deserts and forests of Africa, South and Central America, is actually one of the world's most venomous spiders. The thing is, they're also super shy. Instead of showing aggression, the spider buries itself in the sand and ambushes prey that wanders too closely. Sand particles adhere to cuticles on its abdomen, acting as a natural camouflage if uncovered. The spider in this video is actually someone's pet from Murrieta in California. Don't you think she's cute in a freaky kind of way? In August 2020, a video started circulating on social media which claimed to show the King of Bahrain, Ahmad bin Isa bin Al Khalifa, arriving in Dubai with his 8-foot robot bodyguard. Let's take a look. The robot was said to speak six languages and be fitted with 360-degree cameras and built-in pistols, which is more than enough to send anyone into a spin over the probability of an impending AI takeover. It seems way too Black Mirror to be real, and that's because it isn't. The King of Bahrain does not, in fact, have an eight-foot robot bodyguard at his disposal. The video was actually filmed during the IDEX security exhibition in 2019, which is held at the Dubai International Financial Center. The robot, which bears the United Arab Emirates flag in the clip, is actually just a human performer inside a partially mechanized suit, which is known as Titan the Robot. Titan was developed by the British company Cyberstein and has been described as the world's first commercial entertainment artist. The suit is approximately 8 feet tall and weighs 60 kilograms, making it a formidable sight to behold. I should have known he wasn't a real bodyguard as soon as I saw that walk. Ever seen ravioli dance before? Well, now you have. Just kidding, these are actually baby stingrays, which are adorably known as pups. These little guys were filmed back in 2010 at the Hatfield Marine Science Center in Newport, Oregon. One of the many cool things you may not know about stingrays is that, even though they're officially classed as fish, they give birth to live young. This makes them viviparous, which means that the eggs develop and hatch inside the mother, who then gives birth to between two to six offspring at a time. 
Before the birth, the female holds the embryos in the womb without a placenta. Instead, the embryos absorb nutrients from a yolk sac, and after the sac is depleted, the mother provides uterine milk to feed her babies. When they're born, they already look like little adults and are already able to defend themselves. Don't you just want to pet them? Or grate parmesan on their tiny heads? Sorry. Remember that fearless dude who squared up to a kangaroo? The man behind the madness is 34-year-old Greg Tonkins from New South Wales, Australia. But what's the backstory behind this crazy clip? On the 15th of June 2016, a group of hunters agreed to help a young cancer sufferer with his wish of catching a 100-kilogram wild boar with his dogs. That afternoon, one of the highly trained dogs came face to face with a large male kangaroo, standing 6 feet tall and weighing an estimated 170 pounds. As you can see in the terrifying clip, the kangaroo got the pup in a chokehold and refused to let go as Tonkins jumped from the truck and ran to help. The roo finally let the dog free, but immediately turned his attentions to the man now standing in front of it. In the heat of the moment, Tonkins bopped the kangaroo on the nose, stunning it enough to make a quick getaway but not seriously injuring the animal. When people discovered that Tonkins is actually a zookeeper at Taronga Western Plains Zoo, the clip was met with heaps of controversy. Contrary to popular belief, kangaroos don't normally box or punch. They prefer to balance on their strong tails and kick with their powerful back legs. According to National Geographic explorer Marco Festobianchit, if the kangaroo had done that to Tonkins, he could have been disemboweled or worse. It seems like Tonkins was faced with a difficult choice – save his dog and face the consequences, or watch the kangaroo almost certainly kill his beloved animal. What would you have done? If any of you guys know anything amazing enough to be shared with the world, get in touch with me with any footage or images at clips at beamazed.com, and I'll see about including it in a future episode. Now let's get back to it. There are plenty of things in the world that humans shouldn't get too close to, and boiling hot lava is definitely one of them. Unless you're a trained geologist, that is. This insane video clip shows Hawaiian Volcano Observatory geologist Tim Orr sampling lava from an active Pahoehoe -hoy breakout, which basically means the smooth, unbroken lava you see here. Kilauea is Hawaii's most active volcano, and sampling has been a regular part of monitoring the volcano's ongoing Pu'u'u'u eruption. The eruption first began in 1983 and ranks as the longest and most voluminous outpouring of lava from Kilauea Volcano's East Rift Zone in more than 500 years. But how does the sampling work? First, geologists look for small, isolated outbreaks like this one and approach upwind, extremely cautiously I would imagine. Then they use a pickaxe to place the lava into a bucket of water to quench it. After all, the eruption temperature of Kilauea lava can be around 2000 degrees Fahrenheit. The lava is so hot that it can easily burn your hand through protective gloves, so it is scooped up as quickly as possible and then solid samples are bagged up and taken back to the lab. Changes in the lava chemistry provide valuable information on the magma plumbing system, and regular sampling provides a long-term record of these changes. That's one smoking hot job! Can you imagine how boring the life of a goldfish must be? Or even worse, a fish in an outdoor pond that is no tank to gaze out of and watch the world go by. Well, some clever clogs have come up with a solution to that little problem by creating a floating fish tank above a pond. These so-called inverted aquariums allow the fish to see above the surface and are especially popular in koi ponds. It's all thanks to the power of atmospheric pressure. You can replicate the effect by filling a cup with water, placing a playing card on top, and then turning it upside down. The water doesn't escape because air molecules are constantly pushing into things in every direction imaginable. Inside the cup, there was no air, so the weight inside was coming from the water alone. At the same time, the air below the card was pushing up into the card, causing an upward pressure that was much greater than the pressure of the water pushing toward the ground, miraculously keeping the water in the cup. 
just check out this massive inverted aquarium. It's like a high-rise fish hotel. Fashion is a pretty big deal nowadays, with huge fashion weeks in London, Milan, New York, and Paris attracting millions of spectators each year. It may not be everyone's cup of tea, but what if it wasn't just perfect models strutting down the runway, but ducks instead? Believe it or not, this fever dream is a reality in Sydney, Australia, where well-dressed ducks steal the show at Sydney Royal Easter Show each year. They waddle down the catwalk in style at the Pied Piper Duck Show, and the adorable sight is considered to be one of the highlights of the event, which attracts an estimated 900,000 annual visitors. The unique event has been run for the past three decades by Brian Harrington, an Australian farmer who works alongside a professional dressmaker who individually styles each duck to fit a specific theme or era. So far, they've covered day wear, evening attire, bridal outfits, 1800s period gowns, and more. If you ask me, Naomi Duck Bell and Kendall Quacker have never looked better. Everyone loves pizza, right? In fact, the people of the United States consume about 350 slices of pizza every second. And that's just the numbers from my own kitchen. That's 122.50. Oh, it's my brother's house. He'll take care of it. It probably doesn't help that you can have a pizza delivered straight to your door from any pizza joint across town in minutes. And I'm not just talking about traveling by car or bike. You can totally get your pizza delivered underwater now, too. Rob Doyle may have one of the most unique jobs in the world as an underwater pizza delivery man for Jules Undersea Lodge in Key Largo, Florida. He dons his scuba gear, pops the pizza in a watertight box that keeps it hot and fresh, and dives in to deliver it directly to the guests. And when he's not delivering pizza, Rob is also a paddy diving instructor. Jules Undersea Lodge is the world's only underwater hotel where scuba diving is the only way to get to your room, so Rob probably is one popular guy. Who knows, underwater delivery services might catch on in the year 3000, if we ever make it there, that is. Ever seen a giant African land snail happily munching its way through a carrot? Didn't think so. I know what you might be thinking right now. Since when did snails have teeth? It's true that they don't exactly have a set of pearly whites like some other animals, but slugs and snails do have a flexible band of thousands of microscopic teeth which is known as a radula ribbon. Radula in Latin means file, and that's exactly what this muscular organ is. The snail uses its radula to lick food and scrape up food particles, while the snail's jaw cuts off larger pieces of food which can then be filed down by the radula. To understand what the single jaw and radula band look like, Two museum interns from Glendale Community College photographed a common European garden snail eating a film of cornstarch and water on a piece of glass. Giant African land snails like this one can grow up to 20 centimeters in length and will eat all kinds of fruits and vegetables. Most snails have a complicated stomach and gut that digests whatever they eat and transforms it into a chemical soup that the snail's tissues can use to perform all its needs. And excuse me, waiter, I'll have the uh, chemical soup, please. The world would be much cooler if humans had superpowers. Sadly, it doesn't seem likely anytime soon. But there are plenty of creatures who already have them. You probably don't think much of it. Take the humble firefly, for example. How can such an insect light up the night sky with ease? Wonder no more because I'm about to break it down for you. Fireflies light up because they're able to produce a chemical reaction inside their bodies. This method is perhaps the best known example of bioluminescence. When oxygen combines with calcium, adenosine triphosphate, or ATP, and the chemical luciferin in the presence of a bioluminescent enzyme known as luciferase, light is produced. A firefly controls the beginning and end of the chemical reaction by adding oxygen to the other chemicals needed to produce light, which allows it to start and stop its light emission. It all happens inside the insect's light organ. When oxygen is available, the organ lights up, and when it isn't, the light goes out. Unlike a light bulb, which produces lots of heat as well as light, 
a firefly's light is cold light, meaning energy isn't lost as heat. This is super important, because if the firefly's light-producing organ got as hot as a light bulb, the tiny bug probably wouldn't survive the experience. Speaking of superpowers, check out this guy casually painting a rainbow across the sky. This beautiful video was filmed by an airport firefighter from the UK using a tank on an Oshkosh Stryker fire truck that takes a whopping 11,000 liters and can be discharged in less than three minutes. Sadly, the truck doesn't also have the ability to shoot rainbows across the sky. That all comes down to a simple science. Rainbows appear in seven colors because water droplets break sunlight into the seven colors of the color spectrum. Light enters the droplet, slowing down and bending as it goes from air to denser water. The light reflects off the inside of the droplet, separating into its component wavelengths, or colors. Finally, light exits the droplet, gets refracted again into the air, and voila, you've got yourself a rainbow. Now, will someone please tell me how to find the pot of gold? Art can take many different forms, and street art has to be one of the most underappreciated yet beautiful varieties. I'm not just talking about the odd bit of graffiti on your local street corner. I'm talking about giant murals that can transform buildings entirely, like this one. No, you haven't accidentally turned the quality of this video down to 144p. This mural has been designed to look blurry on purpose. It was designed by Ricky Dees as a part of a project called Città di Colori 2020, or City of Colors 2020 in Torino, Italy. This incredible drone footage shows Diza and his team slaving over the mural on the massive building. Those tiny blocks of color aren't so tiny after all. The mind-blowing scale of the mural really becomes clear when the drone zooms out and you can barely see the puny humans painting away inside the scaffolding. I'll bet fans of the classic 8-bit video game style would love to live on the same street as this crazy artistic feat. Have you ever come across a pangolin before? Unless you live in Asia or Sub-Saharan Africa, the chances are these scaly anteaters are about as strange as land-dwelling creatures get but they get even weirder when you see them walk. Did you know that these bizarre creatures could walk on their hind legs like humans? By raising their front feet and tail completely off the ground, pangolins exhibit what's known as a bipedal stance, which basically means they can move on two legs. Maybe the dinosaurs didn't go extinct after all, because this totally looks like a tiny T-Rex on the move. Pangolins are full of surprises. They're apparently great swimmers, too. Who knew? Which of these first-time things amazed you the most? Let me know in the comments below. And if you're not done packing your brain with juicy content just yet, why not check out one of the previous episodes in this series next? And don't forget to write in at clips at with any more amazing things you think I should see. Thanks for watching, guys.